Hello guys, welcome back to another video of engineering tutorial. It's me again, Jay, and for today's lesson, I am going to discuss to you one of the fundamental topic in strength of material, which is normal stress. But since this is the first topic in this course, let's have a quick review or quick discussion on the application of strength of materials in real world situation. So let's define first what strength of materials and and what are the scope of strength of materials? So strength of materials is also known as a mechanics of materials or mechanics of deformable bodies. So from the other book, it is known as mechanics of deformable bodies, but it is widely known as strength of materials. And strength of materials, it is all a branch of applied mechanics alongside with statics and dynamics, but the difference is that Strength of materials deals with the behavior of solid um, being subjected to different type of loadings. And the principal objective of mechanics of material is to determine the stresses, the strain, the displacement in structures and their components due to the load acting on them. So basically, to put it in a nutshell, ang strength of materials deals with the deformation or the behavior of a material kung meron tayong load. Okay, like for example, if meron tayong beam and we know that beam carries the load which is being transferred by the floor. Diba? And also, we have also beam carries the load uh, from the roof as well. And since we have a load no, in our beam, so there is a possibility or obviously ang at ang ang beam ay magkakaroon ng deformation or deflection. Tama? So, and then the other example to that is when we have column. If, if, if you notice, ang column is connected siya sa mga beam. Tama? So, ang column, it's just the vertical structure which is connected sa to ang beam. Okay? Now, column, since our beam carries the load of the floor and the load was, is transferred to the to the column it represented by an actual force so we have this our column so my actual load jan or when you see actual load it is the force acting normally or acting perpendicularly sa area or sa cross sectional area ng column Okay? And since we have an actual load to that column, so there are two possibilities or there are two uh, cases na mangyayari sa column. It could either ang column natin ay mag-shorten or ang column natin is mag-lengthen. So, iikli siya or tataas. Okay? So, that would happen in our column. However, it depends on the type of actual force. So, we have two type of actual force. It would have a compressive force. Now, compressive force from the word itself, compression, it is the force acting towards the area or towards the point. So, if we have compressed, so that would be our compressive force. Now, the, the effect of this force sa column natin would be ano mangyari sa column? So, column natin ay mag-shorten. So, i So, magiging short yung column natin. So, that one of the most common failure no pag hindi uh, proper yung design ng column so magbabakel yung column natin we also have tensile which is tensile force a force acting away from the surface so what would be the effect of tensile force sa column and that would ang column natin ay mag lengthen tama there would be a lengthening ha happen sa column so what a stretch Okay, so there would, um, our column would stretch due to tensile force. So that is the scope of strength of materials. So strength of materials focuses on the behavior of a deformable bodies. Okay, unlike the statics, so statics it deals with rigid bodies. We do not consider deformation in statics, but here in strength of material we consider stresses, strain, and deformation or displacement in the materials. Okay. So, I hope it makes clear sa inyo ang scope ng strength of material and the difference and the difference of strength of materials from the other branch of mechanics. 
Now let's move forward. Now let's move to normal stress. So act when we have forces sa beam or sa material, we have different stresses. And materials experience different stresses. We have normal stress, the first one. And we also have shear stress. And we also have bearing stress. Okay? So these are the different type of stresses experienced by the material due to external forces but here in our in this video we will only be focusing on normal stress now let's first discuss or understand what is a stress a stress that is um, the force or the intensity of force experienced by the by the object no or by the areas by the material in one unit area. When we see one unit area, it could be one inch by one inch, one inch by one inch, or it could be a one meter by one meter, or one mm by one mm. So that is the force acting perpendicular to this area. So it is the force acting normally to one meter by one meter area or one inch by one inch area so that's how you that's how stress is being defined the intensity of the force so it is uh, nor um it could also be compared to what you're experiencing diba? so if we are being bombarded with a lot of homeworks a lot of of school work so we would experience pressure and pressure equates to stress okay so that's how if we have a load in a specific area, in a specific material, so that material experiences stress. Okay? Now, stress formula is force over area. P over A. Where P here, that is the actual force, and A, that is the area normal to the force or perpendicular to the force. Okay? And then the unit of our stress is in terms of KPA. When we say KPA, that is kilopascal or it could be megapascal in english unit we have psi or pound per square inch ksi or it's kilopound per square inch one pascal that is equal to one newton per square meter so take note of this and one megapascal is equal to millions of pascal so one times 10 raised to the six newton per meter squared or that is equal equivalent to 1 newton per square millimeter. Okay, so it's the same. But when we say megapascal, that is either 1 times 10 raised to the 6 newton over meter squared or 1 newton per square millimeter. And for English unit, we have PSI. PSI is pound per square inch or that is um, equivalent to 6.895 kilopascal. Okay, or we can have KSI or that is 1,000 pound per square inch or 1000 psi so this is the unit of stress okay and the formula for stress is p over a or that is force over the area so like for example if we have this bar a bar a circular bar then we have an actual force this tensile force why is it considered tensile force it's acting away away from the area or from the section so, what would be the effect of this tensile force apart? So, there would be a deformation and increase in the length. And the stress experience, the, the cross-sectional area, this is the cross-sectional area. So, if we cut at this section, so, ito yung makikita natin. This would, uh, so, this is the cross-sectional area at this section. So, the, the stress at this section is just equal to the force, the P, the actual force, or the tensile force over the area. And in this case, our area is circular. We have circular area. So from our geometry, the area of a circle is pi r squared, or we have pi d squared over 4. Okay, or it's the area of a circle, or we also have pi r squared. So, it would be better if you uh, review your geometry because it would be very helpful no, in solving different problem cases in this topic. Okay, so now let's try to solve 
example. So we have example number one. We have a solid 14 mm diameter steel hanger rod is used to hold up one end of a walkway support beam. The force carried by the rod is 21,000 newton or that's 21 kilonewton. And and determine the normal stress in the rod. So the problem ask for the stress experienced by this rod. Okay, and we know that this rod carries a load of 21,000 kilonewton or that is or 21,000 newton rather that is 21 kilonewton. So compute the stress experienced by this rod. So again from our formula that is stress is equal to P over A. Therefore, we have stress is equal to our P here that is 21,000 newton or that is 21 kilonewton. So, let's convert it into thousand. It's 21,000 newton over the area. Now, since this is a circle, okay, and we know that the area of a circle is Given we have 14 mm diameter, so the given is in terms of diameter that is 41, uh, sorry, that's pi d squared, pi d squared over 4, so that is pi, d is 14 squared over 4, correct? So, therefore, the area of, us, of the cross-sectional area of the rod is 49 pi. So let's put 49 pi in the denominator. That's 49 pi. And since it is area, then we have the unit of area is mm squared. No? We use millimeter case since we use um, 14. No, That is in terms of millimeter. And that gives us 21,000 over 14 and pi that equals to 136.419 newton per mm squared. And we know that newton per mm squared that is megapascal. So therefore, stress equal to 136.419 megapascal. So that is the stress experienced by the rod. Okay, now let's solve um, example number two. We have a hollow steel tube with an inside diameter of 100 mm must carry a tensile load of 400 kilonewton. Determine the outside diameter of the tube if the stress is limited to 120 meganewton per square meter. Okay, so we have a hollow steel tube. So what is a hollow steel tube? It is the same um, structure with um, as a pipe, no? Para siyang pipe. So hollow yung gitna. So if this is our um, outside surface of the pipe or the tube, and this is the inside surface of the tube. So, our effective area here na nakaka-experience ng stress is just the this area. Okay? Kasi since this is what? Hollow. A hole. So, the, this is just the area which is experiencing stress. Okay? So, in that case, we need to compute for the area. This area. And we have given the inside diameter of the tube is 100 mm this one here this one that is 100 mm and the outside diameter is unknown so that is the value na that we need to compute so we are going to compute for the outside diameter so that the stress will not exceed 120 megapascal. Dapat, ang stress na experience ng cross-sectional area dapat ay hindi lalagpas or should not exceed 120 megapascal. Okay? But our steel tube carries a load of 400 
1000 newton okay so this is our tube okay so this is our tube this is the cross sectional area so it carries for tensile load of 400 kilonewton okay so let's compute now the stress experienced by this cross sectional area so from the formula for stress that is the stress the normal stress is equal to force over the area and stress is equal to we have force of and then we have p is equal to 400,000 newton or that is 400 kilonewton and we have the area since we have we don't have value of outside diameter then let's stay the variable okay so let's use the variable okay in that case we know that the area it is just equal to the area of the outside circle minus the area of the inside circle that is the area okay this area so in that case we can create an equation that is area is equal to the area of the outside circle we have pi over 4 that is the area of the outside of the circle squared minus the area of the inside circle that is pi over 4 then the inside diameter so therefore we can to simplify that is pi over 4 times the diameter of the outside squared minus the diameter of the inside squared so take pi over 4 outside of the equation so we factor out pi over 4 and we know we have since we have inside diameter value and that is 100 mm so we can use 100 mm so we can um, substitute 100 mm to our equation okay so our p here that is 400,000 400,000 newton over area of pi over 4 that is the outside diameter is unknown minus the inside diameter that is 100 um, squared that is the unit is naka mm squared now our stress here since we have stress 120 mega newton per square meter and we know that 120 mega newtons per square meter that is equals to 120 mega pascal correct or that is 120 newton per square millimeter remember that m now mega pascal m stands for mega pascal okay so let's sub use 120 in this equation 120 newton mm squared equals to 400 thousand newton over pi over 4 d sub o or that's the outside diameter squared minus 100 squared mm squared correct so therefore we have answer for outside diameter so you can use your calculator shortcut no so if you know how to use it using shift solve then you may so we have the outside diameter is 119.3488 mm okay so this hollow tube should have a diameter of 119 mm so that the stress experienced by the tube will not exceed 120 megapascal so this is now your final answer.